Chapter 3 is looking at industrial class systems and I want to say and make sure you know that the principal forces that produce stratification are related to the ways in which people earn their living. In the non-industrial world, the majority of people are small farmers or peasants and when they look up from their toil in the fields, they see members of higher social strata, such as the landlords, the money lenders, the military chiefs, the religious leaders. These groups control the peasants' means of existence, um, which is the land and the resources needed to make it produce. In contrast, in the stratification systems of industrial societies, whether socialist or capitalist, most people are urban wage workers whose fates are determined by the managers of public, <coughs> excuse me, or private firms. If the firms are no longer productive or consumers no longer desire their products, urban workers may lose their jobs and suffer economic hardship. The stratification systems of the United States and Canada, where less than one twentieth of the population works the land are most relevant to understanding people's life chances in modern industrial societies. The Industrial Revolution profoundly altered the stratification systems of rural societies. The mechanization of agriculture greatly decreased the number of people needed to work on the land, which largely eliminated the classes of peasants and farm laborers in some societies. Make sure you know what structural mobility is uh, because that dimension of social change is often called structural mobility. It's an entire class is eliminated as a result of changes in the means of existence. The Industrial Revolution transformed the United States from a nation in which almost 90% of the people worked in farming and related occupations into one in which less than 10% did. Structural mobility did not end with the Industrial Revolution. Today, automation, foreign competition, and technological advances are creating new patterns of structural mobility. Older industries like steel and rubber have been steadily losing factories and jobs, and newer industries based on information and communication technologies have been creating plants and jobs. But the people who have become superfluous uh, as a result of the closing of their plants are not always willing to move to the new jobs, nor are they often trained to meet the demands of such jobs. Therefore, structural mobility often leads to demands for social policies like job training programs and unemployment insurance. Now make sure you know that the second major change that was brought on by the Industrial Revolution was a tremendous increase in spatial mobility, and this is also known as geographic mobility. Make sure you know this term refers to the movement of individuals, families, and larger groups from one location or community to another. The increase of spatial mobility resulted from the declining importance of the rural village and the increase in the importance of city-centered institutions like markets, corporations, and governments. Increasingly, one's place of work became separate from one's place of residence. People's allegiance to local communities was weakened by their need to move both within the city and to other parts of the nation. And as a result, social strata began to span the entire nations. So make sure you understand that. Working class people created similar communities everywhere, as did the middle classes and the rich. Now, despite these immense changes, our relationship to the means of existence is still the main factor determining our position in our society stratification system. We continue to define ourselves to one another first and foremost in terms of how we make a living, such as I am a professor, he is a lawyer, she is a nurse, he's a home appraiser, and so forth and so on. Now, make sure you know, in the words of sociologist and historian Carl Polanyi, 
The Industrial Revolution was a great transformation. And basically what he means by this, and make sure you know it, is that for the first time in human history, the market became the dominant institution of society. The market created by the Industrial Revolution was a social network that gradually extended over the entire world and linked buyers and sellers in a system that governed the distribution of goods of every imaginable type. Services of all kinds, human uh, labor power, and new forms of energy like coal and oil. Now, among the other key elements of the grand, Great Transformation were these, and, and you don't need to know these in order, or, uh, but just kind of be familiar with them. You'll have to identify um, the one that don't belong. But number one, rural people displaced from the land began selling their labor for wages in factories and commercial firms in the cities. Make sure you know that. Make sure you know that relationships that had been based on ascribed statuses were replaced with relationships based on contracts. Um, a produced hired laborer, for example, rather than relying on kinship obligations or village loyalties to supply workers. Uh, make sure you know the business firm or the corporation replaced the family the manor and the guild as the dominant economic institution. Goods, land, and labor were transformed into commodities whose value could be calculated and translated into a specific amount of gold or its equivalent, which is money. And in the new industrial order, demands for full political rights and equality of opportunity which originated with the bourgeoisie, slowly spread to the new class of wage workers, to the poor and to women, especially in societies in which revolutions created more open stratification systems. 